You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. I want everyone to understand that the clips that you viewed prior to this discussion, everything that's being discussed here is giving clarity to what you see in those clips and what promotes those type of activities. And so uh, we have more that we're going to cover here to show you that uh, how the Talmud completely contradicts what the Torah says. I want to put this term out there, strange creatures. Now, according to the Talmud, Berakoth section 58a, it says this, on seeing pockmarked persons, one says, blessed be he who makes strange creatures. An objection was raised if one sees a Negro or very red or very white person, a hunchback, a dwarf, or a dropsical person, he says, blessed be he who makes strange creatures creatures. It goes on to say this, our rabbis taught on seeing an elephant, an ape, or a long-tailed ape. One says, blessed is he who makes strange creatures. Also, according to the Talmud, Sanhedrin section 108b, it says, our rabbis taught three copulated in the ark, and they all were punished. The dog, the raven, and ham. The dog was doomed to be tied. The raven expirates his seed into his mate's mouth, and ham was smitten in his skin. Now, in the footnote of this particular uh, law, it says that from him descended Cush, the Negro, who is black skinned. So let's get it going, Pastor Carr. What are the contradictions between the Talmud and the Torah? Pastor Richardson, according to Genesis 9, 20 through 25, where in scripture did you read that ham and a dog and a raven had bestiality sex with each other? Exactly. You did not read that. Therefore, that is not foundational scripture. That's not biblical. And according to the Judaism, according to the Talmud, um, in the uh, Mass Sanhedrin 108b, it specifies that uh, a raven has a sexual organ or phallic organ that uh, he expectorates or his uh, his semen um, seed goes into his mate's mouth, uh, which that's not written in scripture at all. It says that three copulated. You see, when they say three copulated, they are saying that there were... Um, some sexual activity that took place between the dog, the raven, and ham. And all were punished. The dog was punished to be tied or doomed to be tied. And the raven uh, <laughs> was, the raven expectorates um, his seed into the mate's mouth. Okay. Um, it, it, this is, this is just foolishness. Um, it doesn't, there's, there's no uh, biblical connotation to support this concept. Now, Jerry, I want to uh, keep this discussion moving forward, but I want us to briefly touch on another key point in regards to the term strange creatures. 
We've identified according to the Talmud Mass Sanhedrin section 108b that these rabbinical teachings, which contradicts the Torah, says all Negroes are strange creatures. We've established in their teachings that they believe that all Negroes are cursed with dark skin due to him practicing bestiality in the ark with a raven and a dog. Now, I want to share a couple of quotes here uh, from the book Origins of Design and Nature. These quotes are based upon the teachings of the Babylonian Talmud. It says, initially, man was created as a creature belonging to the animal category and evolved until it was given a human mind and human physiology. It also says, at creation, the creatures were not made in perfect anatomical form and they continued to develop and change along the way. The first man is described as a creature in an intermediate developmental stage. He was created double faced and only later was separated into two independent entities, male and female. He was born as a hermaphrodite. And so Judaism is the source, the root to the false teachings that created the lie that was and is currently being used to manipulate the minds of blacks and most religious groups in believing that black skin is the result of a curse and that we are cursed to be less than all other races and be enslaved to them. This is how it influenced the Mormons doctrine. The Mormon president and the so-called prophet Joseph Fielding Smith in the Doctrines of Salvation, page 61, this is what it says. There is a reason why one man is born black and with other disadvantages, while another is born white with great advantages. The reason is that we once had an estate before we came here and were obedient more or less to the laws that were given us there. Those who were faithful in all things there received greater blessings here, and those who were not faithful received less. And also on page, uh, on page 65 and 66 of the same book, it says this as well. There were no neutral wars in heaven, all sides took either with Christ or with Satan. Every man had his agency there and men received rewards based upon their actions there, just as they will receive rewards hereafter for deeds in the body. The Negro evidently is receiving the reward he merits. Now, here's how it influenced the Jehovah Witnesses doctrine. Now, according to Charles Russell um, in the Zion's Watchtower, dated July 15th, 1902, between pages 215 and 216, this is what it says. While it is true that the white race exhibits some qualities of superiority over any other we are to remember that there are wide differences in the same Caucasian. In other words, it's referring to Semitic and Aryan families. Also, Joseph Rutherford wrote this in the Golden Age Journal dated July 24th, 1929, page 702. This is what he wrote. It is generally believed that the curse which Noah pronounced upon Canaan was the origin of the black race. Now, Jerry, we defined and discussed who is associated with the term strange creatures. But I'd like for you to bring home the final key point, And that is, according to the other rabbinical teachings, who fathered these strange creatures.
You see, the reason why we are going to this level of saying this is blasphemy and it's blasphemy just because you are calling Adam and hermaphrodite. Genesis 1 and 31, the very last verse. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything he made, Pastor Richardson, was very good. So did he make Adam a hermaphrodite, and is that an acceptable or a good thing? thing and creation where are these people coming up or germinating these ideas to slander our elohim blaspheme our elohim it's specific right here in scripture that he saw that it was good behold meaning look hey pay attention behold is the hebrew word is hey okay it's a hebrew letter it means hey H-E-Y. Hey, pay attention. Get real deep on this thing. It was good. The creation was good. There's nothing in the creation that germinated strange creatures. I'm going to talk to specifically today about the black culture. They do not know their history. That's one of the things that I know. And so you have to tell them their history.